Hello, my name is Steve. Welcome to this quick video on debugging configuration issues on Intel FPGA devices that have a secure device manager. Modern Intel FPGAs like Intel Stratix 10 and Intel Agilex devices adopt the secure device manager architecture which provides a fail-safe, strongly authenticated, programmable security mode for device configuration. The SDM comprises peripherals, cryptographic IP and sensors, boot ROM, triple redundant lockstep processors, and other blocks as shown. The SDM performs and manages power management through the smart VID. The AES, SHA, and other crypto accelerator blocks implement secure configuration and boot. The key vault provides volatile and non-volatile cryptographic key storage. To mitigate potential side channel attacks, Crypto functions that use keys require a special hardware storage mechanism. Various configuration schemes depending on how the configuration are set up, like Active Serial, Avalon Stream, and others. To reduce configuration file size and support smaller memory devices and enable faster configuration, the Intel Cortis Prime software compresses the configuration data. All Intel Stratix 10 devices compress the configuration bitstream. This feature is always enabled. When specifying an encrypted configuration bitstream, the Intel Core's Prime Pro Edition software compresses the configuration stream before encryption. Due to the feature-rich SDM architecture, there are some configuration dependencies for a successful configuration. I will share some common mistakes that may cause configuration failures and the common debug methodologies. These are the three areas that I'll cover in the remainder of this presentation. Configuration dependencies, read configuration status, reset release IP requirement. The first dependency is the smart VID setting of the device. The smart VID device comes with the dash V suffix in its part number. To use the smart VID feature, you have to connect a PM bus compliant smart regulator or the power management controller to the device using the SDM underscore IO pins. The two diagrams show the connection to the PM bus voltage regulator or the power management controller depending on whether you're using the PM bus master mode or slave mode. During the configuration, the SDM communicates to the external voltage regulator or power management controller. If the SDM fails to get a response from either of them, it will cause a configuration error. There are a few settings that you may check to ensure that you set the Smart VID correctly. In your Intel Core's Prime Pro project, you can check whether the SDM I.O. pins have been assigned correctly as shown in the diagram. This setting has to be matched with a physical pin connection to the PM bus voltage regulator or power management controller. Secondly, you need to ensure the power management setting in the device and pin options as shown in the diagram is set correctly according to your PM bus address assignment on your board design. For information on how to set all the other settings, refer to the Stratix 10 or Agilex power management user guide. Verify that the board connections to the SDM IO pins and the PM bus are connected correctly to the voltage regulator or power management controller. Some boards may have dip switches to connect or disconnect the PM bus. If you are using the PM bus slave mode, ensure the external power management controller complies with the external PM bus master software flow documented in the Intel Stratix 10 Agilex power management user guide. To avoid configuration failures, the Intel Stratix 10 device requires clocks for the PCIe, HPS EMIF, ESRAM, the HBM2 IP, and all eTile transceiver reference clocks. You must provide a free-running, stable reference clock to these blocks before configuration begins and throughout the entire user mode. The clock frequencies must match the frequency settings specified in the Intel Cortis Prime software during configuration. Stopping the reference clock during the user mode may result in a functional failure. This reference clock is in addition to the configuration clock requirements. The last dependency is the configuration clock source. If you use the OSC clock 1, you need to ensure the clock frequency setting in the Cortis project as shown in the diagram is matched with the actual clock source on the board. There are three clock frequency options in total, 25 MHz, 100 MHz, and 125 MHz. 
The next debugging tip is to read the configuration status whenever a configuration failure is reported. You may use the Cordis underscore PGM command to read the configuration status. The two diagrams show passing and failing case examples. I won't go through all the various programming options here, as you can find more information about the individual options by running Cordis underscore PGM dash dash help on the command line. The dash C cable number is the index of cables connected to the host machine. The dash M is the programming method, and in this case, I'm programming through a JTAG connection. The dash dash status is the configuration status of the FPGA. The screenshot on the left shows a passing status, whereas the screenshot on the right shows a failing status. More information about the failing status is coming up on the next slide. Now more information about that failing test case. The leftmost two bytes of the state condition indicate the major error code, and the rightmost two bytes indicate the minor error code. For the example in the screenshot, the major error code of hex F002 indicates an external hardware access error and the minor error code of hex 32 indicates a power management bus error during configuration due to an incorrect VID setting in the Intel Cores Prime project. The target device failed to communicate with the smart regulator or the PM bus master on a board. The status message for the error codes are found in the appendix of the Mailbox Client Intel FPGA IP user guide. Intel Stratix 10 and Angelix devices use a parallel, sector-based architecture that distributes core fabric logic across multiple sectors. Device configuration proceeds in parallel with each local sector manager configuring its own sector. Consequently, FPGA registers and core logic do not exit reset at exactly the same time as has always been the case in previous FPGA families. So, the intended initial state becomes transitory. The continual increases in clock frequency, device size, and design complexity now necessitate a reset strategy that considers the possible effects of slight differences in the release from reset. The reset release Intel FPGA IP holds a control circuit in reset until the device has fully entered user mode, at which point the design downloaded into the FPGA starts running. There are more debugging suggestions that can be found in Stratix 10 and Agilex configuration user guide, some of which are specific to the respective configuration mode. You may refer to the respective sections in the user guides as shown on the screenshot. You can refer to the references listed on this slide for more information about Stratix 10 and Agilex configurations. Thank you for listening to this presentation.